Howdy all, it's your favourite Easter egg hunter Ian Higton here, and after what seems like quite a long time away from chasing down video game secrets and references, I'm finally back with a look at some of the cheeky little nods that Dead Island 2 has to offer. Now, Dead Island 2 doesn't seem to have as many Easter eggs as other open world games that I've covered here on Eurogamer, but I still stumbled over a few interesting ones during my journey through the zombie infested streets of LA. So what follows is my list of 13 Dead Island 2 Easter eggs, what I gone done and found. Now, word of warning here, this video is full of more spoilers than a Fast and the Furious movie, so if you haven't completed the game yet, it might be worth coming back to this video at a later date. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's crack on with the show. I don't want to alarm you, but that was awesome! We are going to be so famous when this goes live! So let's start with a relatively simple one, which you can find inside the Goat Pen Influencer House in Bel Air. The Goat Pen Influencer House is rammed full of references to YouTubers, podcasters, social media influencers, and probably a bunch of other errs that I've never even heard of too. But as a YouTuber myself, this written apology found on a whiteboard perfectly captures the type of insincere YouTuber apology that's been made famous by people like CSGO scammer and terrible fake crier T. Martin. With lines like, sorry to all my fans I've disappointed, and cry here for sympathy, the only thing missing from this spot-on piece of social influencer satire is a dog for our evacuation-denying internet celebrity to kiss for even more unwarranted sympathy. Cooper, I have no idea how I'm going to record this video, dude. Oh! Whoa! You got no shot on this eight ball. Lose the cue. Now, the fact that returning character Sam B here features quite heavily in Dead Island 2 isn't really an Easter egg as such, as his addition to the cast was heavily advertised in the build-up to the game's launch. However, while Sam B's presence may not be that much of a surprise, his being in LA does open the door to quite a few references to events from the previous games in the Dead Island series. For example, Sam B's famous song, Who Do You Voodoo, which featured in the opening cutscene to the original Dead Island gets referenced multiple times in this game. First off, if you manage to rescue Curtis Sinclair and then return to Emma Jaunt's mansion after reaching Venice Beach, you can hear Sam B and Curtis discussing the song in one of the mansion's ground floor rooms. I know your face, but... Uh... I can't put a name to him. Oh, yeah? Does Sam B ring any bells? Uh, Sam B. Yes, that's it. We wanted your song for a movie, but your agent drove the price up too damn high. Said it was because you died, <laughs> if you can believe it. <laughs> oh, uh, what was it called? Uh, who is your hoodoo? It's actually voodoo. Right, right. Voodoo, your hoodoo. <laughs> Quite the tongue twister you wrote. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. Then later on, near the end of the game, Sam briefly brings up the song again when he's introduced to the sewer dwelling pattern. And I'm Sam B. You know, who do you voodoo, bitch? <laughs> Finally, Sam B's song is also referenced in the name of the game's platinum trophy, Who Do You Voodoo, which you'll unlock for grabbing all of the trophies in the game. As an interesting aside, an easter egg for Who Do You Voodoo also appears in the first house that you enter in Dying Light 2, the other big zombie kicking series that was developed by Techland, the original developers of the Dead Island series. Who Do You Voodoo? Hmm. Sounds familiar. While Sam B may be the only returning character from the original games to make a physical appearance in Dead Island 2, during another conversation about naming his gun between himself, Curtis Sinclair and Elizabeth, Sam B rattles off a few names that fans of the series may recognise. Well, this guy called Logan had my back in Van Hoy. <laughs> but if that redneck ever found out I named something after him, I'd never live it down. Could name it Xi'an Mei. 
but I see her more like an elegant knife, you get me? And there is also Perna. That's a pretty name. You can use that. We stopped talking after what happened on the boat. Nah, John's a good man. How about that? No, no. <laughs> Never, John. Logan, Jean May, and Perna, of course, all appear as playable characters in the original Dead Island, while the John that Sam B referenced is John Morgan, a playable character from the sequel Dead Island Riptide. Fine. You know what? Jen. She looked after everything we couldn't carry back on Banoi. The final name Sam decides on, though, is Jin, and the reason he says... All right, I'll get you out this time, Jin, is because Jin is an NPC who dies right at the end of the original game. <laughs> oh my god, what a touching tribute. <laughs> I'm not crying, you are. <laughs> The final easter egg involving Sam B that I found actually centres around a dog, or in this case, a deceased dog that you can find buried in the garden of Emma Jaunt's mansion. Head back to Emma's mansion once you've opened up the Santa Monica Pier mission and you'll hear this conversation between Emma and Sam. I was pissed at you. Furious, actually. What a dog! Come on, girl! I loved that dog! Loved him almost as much as I hated Robert. That's why the bastard shot him, of course. So, after her husband Richard shot Sam the dog, it was buried here. But in a crazy twist, if you head back to this spot after Michael Anders, Emma's assistant, is killed, you can find his grave lying next to the grave of Sam the dog. That's right, Emma and her fellow survivors have buried Michael next to the dog, proving that Emma really did see Michael as nothing more than a pet rather than a friend or even a person. Wow, so even in death Emma is looking down on Michael. Whew, harsh. <laughs> As expected from a film set in Hollywood, there are many, many movie-related references shoved into Dead Island 2. So many, in fact, that I've probably missed hundreds of them. Nevertheless, here are the ones that I found during my playthrough of the game, starting with the ever-present references to George Romero, the movie director who is widely seen as the father of the zombie genre of movies. To pay tribute to George, Dead Island 2's imitation of Hollywood's famous Oscars ceremony is actually called the Romeros, and they even have a Golden Zombie Hand Award to match, which is so illustrious in the Dead Island 2 universe that Michael risks his life to find Emma's in Monarch Studios. Wait. We went through all this for a fucking Romero? Uh, Emma's Romero. Not only that, though, the final mission in Dead Island 2 actually takes place amongst the ruins of the actual Romero Award ceremony on Hollywood Boulevard. And considering Dead Island 2 might not even exist without the influence of George Romero, this feels like a fitting tribute to the King of the Walking Dead. George Romero isn't the only real-world horror movie director to get a reference in Dead Island 2, though. Head on over to the safe area in the Serling Hotel in Ocean Avenue and you'll soon stumble across Argento's Sky Lounge, a bar named after the master of Italian horror, Dario Argento. Mr Argento is famous for films such as Suspiria and Tenebrae, but he also served as a script consultant on George Romero's Dawn of the Dead, for which he also composed the soundtrack. And he even re-edited Dawn of the Dead for its Italian release, which was called Zombie, and this then spawned the Zombie series of films. <laughs> Now, it's not just movie directors who get a nod in Dead Island 2. Famous American movie critic Roger Ebert does too. A reference to Roger, who died in 2013, can be found on promotional posters dotted around the game world for the movie Space Fox, which stars Sarah Shepard, who you get to meet in a couple of side missions. On that poster, there is a quote from a movie critic called Robert Edgar, whose name is quite obviously a jumbled version of Roger Ebert, with a few extra letters thrown in for good measure. 
The R-O in Robert and the G-E-R in Edgar makes Roger, while the remaining letters can also spell out Ebert, with an A and a D thrown in there as well to presumably make that fake name sound as much like a real name as possible. On the subject of fake films though, if you have played Dead Island 2, you'll no doubt have noticed the literal thousands of DVDs lying around for a TV series called The Badge. I notice them all of the time because they are always out of order and it honestly really aggravates me. But also in this clip here, why would this person have seven copies of the rental version of something called Mallet Films? That's just going to cost a fortune in late fees, surely? Anyway, to get back on track, these DVDs aren't all we see of the badge in Dead Island 2, because, along with posters up all over the place promoting the show, we also get to meet one of its stars, holding up in the Serling Hotel on Ocean Avenue. Jimmy Montana here is quite a piece of work and thoroughly undeserving of his fame, but either way, it's quite a nice touch that you can interact with the star of this fictional show in the game. Uh, nah, nah, I, I gotta stay here, look after the people, you know? Ain't that the doc's job? Yeah, and where is he? Hiding away in his office, crying that his little girl ran off? When was the last time he cried over one of us, huh? And it's not just fictional actors who get some screen time in Dead Island 2. If you head to Hollywood Boulevard and check out the stars on the Walk of Fame, you'll notice that the names of most of the voice talent in Dead Island 2 have been given their own stars on the Walk of Fame. For instance, Sissy Jones here plays Sarah Shepard, Kevin Cornwall plays Sam B, and Joseph May plays Michael Anders. Rather embarrassingly for all involved, though, Hannah Steele, the actor who plays Emma Jaunt, also features on a star, but her name is spelled wrong. Hannah Steele's surname is actually spelled with an extra E on the end. Whoopsie, dambusters. Whoopsie. You know that saying, The Simpsons already did it, which was coined by South Park many years ago? Well, it turns out that that saying is 100% correct, because in a little bit of joke text on the side of LA's police cars, it says to protect and sever, instead of to protect and serve. That's quite a nice little pun based on both the famous police motto and the act of maiming zombies in Dead Island 2. But as we can see in the following clip, The Simpsons did, in fact, already did it. To protect and sever? One thing The Simpsons has never done, though, I think, is featured a reference to Dead Island 2 developer Dan Buster Studios' previous title, Homefront the Revolution. If you head into the Funland Arcade on Santa Monica Pier and have a nose around, you'll find a sadly powered off Homefront the Revolution arcade machine, which sparks this interesting voice line. Oh, cool. I used to love arcades. They better have a Time Splitters machine. Luckily for Ryan, there are indeed Time Splitters arcade cabs in Funland, and when you finally power them on, you can stand next to them and hear a lovely rendition of the Time Splitters 2 theme song. Now, while both of these arcade machines do power on, neither of them are playable. And the same can be said for this Dripper cab here, which can be found in the Goat Pen House. Dripper is a nod to the classic 1983 arcade machine Tapper, aka Root Beer Tapper, and I'd like to think that the names in the high score table there are those of some of the development team, although that one is just a guess on my part. Most of the time, zombies in media, be it films, comics or games, are all silent, which is why when I heard one of the burster enemies talking to me, I was taken aback. Before I was blown against a back wall by its explosion, that is. Listen very carefully when a burster is just about to explode and you'll hear it say things like sorry and bye bye. bye, -bye. I also swear that at one point I heard one saying, I'm lonely, as I snuck up behind it, but I didn't manage to capture that on video, so you'll just have to discover that one for yourselves. Uh... 
And finally, this one is less of an easter egg and more of a cool secret, but if you head to the Monarch Movie Studios and go to this area by Stage 7 at some point after you've reached Venice Beach, you'll bump into a special zombie called the Space Fox Propmaster. Kill that zombie and it'll drop a bunch of keys on the floor which will give you access to a loot crate found at the top of the map just by stage one, which when opened rewards you with the superior class electrocutor pistol which does some serious damage to the heads of the undeads. This one isn't really a reference to anything other than it being a space fox prop but it is still a lot of fun to use so you should track it down if you can. And that is your lot, Easter Egg fans. Hopefully you've enjoyed this look at some of Dead Island 2's Easter Egg secrets and references. If you did, give this video a like, subscribe to Eurogamer for almost daily videos about video games, and let me know in the comments below if you've found any Easter Eggs that I've gone done missed. If we discover enough, I'll see about doing a follow-up video to this one at some point in the future. And that leaves me with only one more thing to say, and that is goodbye, Good Easter egg hunting. Bye!